Welcome to my guide on how to effectively spend your money while wanting to purchase a new brother for your party. As usual, this guide is based on my personal opinion, my tier list, and my personal spreadsheet of stats. This guide also assumes you're having favorable stars when looking for recruits. Technically, this is a condensed version of the tier list that focuses more on the money brackets, so you can have a good idea on what backgrounds to grab for your current wallet size. Only the good backgrounds from the tier list will be included in this guide as we're wanting to spend our money on more reliable stats. Uh, without that out of the way though, we're trying to make this a short and sweet guide, so let's get into it. Uh, quickly before we start, just a reminder that if you have recruit scaling turned on for your run, you will find brothers cost more because they can spawn with more levels as your team gets higher in level and your wallet sizes increase, which, you know, may make it harder to find cheaper brothers when recruiting, so just be aware of that. Uh, now the format that we'll be going with this guide is a minimum maximum price range for each background. Uh, the green numbers are the lower end of the price range that I'd be very happy to spend on a specific background. Going past the red number usually pushes um, past my comfort zone when buying each background, so I don't recommend buying any background over the red price, uh, unless you're super desperate. Uh, but though, if I am spending over the red price, I'll just jump up a price bracket and purchase a more reliable background most of the time. Uh, because prices in the game are varied with levels, equipment, and RNG, it may be hard to find cheap prices consistently, so either be patient or bite the bullet and get a more reliable background for the money you're investing. Do note that you can get lucky and find lower prices than the green ones here, sometimes, uh, usually when the recruit is unequipped, but these numbers are just the main ballpark when I'm looking for recruits. Okay, so, first up, our, we're starting with the cheap ones. This is our $0 to $600 bracket, and in my opinion, it is the most crucial spending area. You can waste thousands of dollars on many cheap backgrounds only to keep coming up dry on stats. Sometimes just going for an expensive background is just easier. But let's show you the good ones here so you can be happy with your purchases. Now, starting off with Melee, we've got the Brawlers, the Rat Catchers, the Butchers, and the Miners. These four are your super cheap backgrounds that will always stay within these price ranges. You're rarely going to see them past the red. And if you're saving cash, they are rather consistent with most of their stats and will be a pretty decent addition to your party. Now, uh, other choices that we have are the Wild Woman, the Killer on the Run, the Grave Robber, the Houndmaster, and the Taxidermist. These ones are all still good choices, a little bit more expensive, but the big problem sometimes is they're a bit more varied in price and can be rather expensive on some occasions. So don't go past the red for these options because you're really not spending the money effectively and you're just going to be wasting it. Don't spend more than red on these guys. It's just not worth it. But within the range, these guys are actually quite strong indeed. Uh, now, my personal additions here, as you can see, are the Cultist and the Juggler. They're not for everyone. I personally love having these guys in my party as melee options, but they can be a little bit unreliable with stats, and they're only really gimmicky in a way. So don't always go for these, unless you too enjoy them in your parties. Uh, moving on to range stats, there are only three choices, but that's actually pretty decent for the cheap range. Uh, cultists are a little bit unreliable with range stats. They're only really useful as slingers if you get a decent stat, or actually get the slinger perk. So they're an iffy one, but shepherds and poachers, definitely reliable and very good choices for the early game, and even up into late game, to have the nice cheap options. Uh, so we're moving on to the other background category. Now this is for mostly banners or certain types of builds. Uh, for the moment, these four here are banner choices. You're going to want to eventually get a banner in your party, and these are really cheap options. Uh, and reliable too. The Cultist is very reliable for its resolve. The Gambler the Monk, and the Nun, all super great choices as a banner. They're a little bit flimsy, but you know, you'll be fine. And you can even get gamblers down to 50 bucks if they're not wearing anything. But don't spend much more than this because it's really not worth it. They're just really nice and cheap and useful. Uh, finally though, we do have cheap options for tanks, which is really nice to see. Melee defense is a rough one to get throughout the entire game, but our choices in the cheap range is Thieves and Pitpockets, 
Pitpockets are actually better than Thieves, so if you're really wanting this super cost-effective, go Pitpockets, but I still roll on Thieves every now and again, because there's a chance that they can roll well, and if you're really hunting for melee defense, just try everything you can, and these two are definitely good choices. But I'd be happy with either of them. But yeah, this is the main range for the cheap ones, and it'll probably be the most of what you're spending on in the early game. Uh, moving on to the next price bracket, we're going to the committed ones. $600 to $1,100, basically. This is when you're trying to be a bit more committed to a build, or you're just trying to save up for a different type of background. Now, there's not too many options here, but it's mostly when you're trying to get more serious with your spending or committing to certain builds. I personally love saving a little bit of cash for the melee options here, uh, but not for every single background. Uh, speaking of the melee options, we have the Amazing Militia and the Manhunter on display. Uh, they're quite cost effective if you can get closer to $600, uh, and you really don't want to be spending over a grand for these guys because they can get really expensive with levels and gear. Uh, do remember that the deserters do have bad resolve, so don't put them in your front lines. But I still have them on this list because they are quite reliable for being a backliner. And they can also get down to a really nice cheap price, closer to 600 as well. So don't forget about the deserter. Uh, now we don't have many ranged options at all here in this price range, but we do have hybrid options. Technically the Witch Hunter and the Muladi, Muladi have ranged stats, but they're not, in my opinion, good ranged brothers. They're good for hybrid options, if you like that stuff. I'm not personally a hybrid person, but hybrids are there and available. Uh, the Muladi can get down to a really nice cheap price of 700 sometimes, but really don't go past about 1,000 or 1,100. Witch Hunters are really hard to get cheap, so I, I really struggle when I used to go for them to find a good price. They always come with levels or they come really expensive. Don't waste your cash. There are better options in the next bracket. So try not to spend too much on Witch Hunters. Uh, our other bracket consists of different brothers this time. We don't have many banner options in this price range. Usually the cheaper ones will do the job. Uh, the Kion is the best minstrel option you have in the game. It's a new southern background added just like the Muladi. Uh, they're a bit more bulkier than your minstrels and your troubadours, but don't go for the minstrels and troubadours. Get yourself a key on. They can do some really nice price ranges between 600 and 850, but don't go too much more than that. And they usually don't go for much more than that, so this is a really good price range. Uh, blacksmiths are added here mainly for late game, as you can see here. Uh, they're super expensive per day, and they don't give you much early game, so you're usually just grabbing them for the late game, and this is a good price to grab them, and their price has been reduced in the latest bunch of patches, which is really nice. They used to be thousands, now they're down to 600-ish. So, very nice pickup. Finally, we have our tank options. Not super amazing options, but the Militia and the Manhunter, when rolling well, or getting your nice stars, can be viable tanks. Uh, but for this kind of price range, Usually you want to cycle through cheaper ones or go for more reliable ones. So I don't always go with these guys as tanks, but they are an option for sure, and they have, have worked for me before. Uh, but moving on, we're going up to our reliable ones. The 1100 to 2500 range really produces a lot of reliable backgrounds, but you're really going to have to pay for them, and that is where money talks and really shines in this game. For our melee options, the trio of Arbalist, Foot Soldier, and Warrior are absolutely amazing. Their prices aren't even that expensive for the stats they give. The only problem is they are super rare, so you're almost never going to see one. But if you do see one, grab one, because they are amazing. Uh, the Adventurous Noble, Retired Soldier, and Noble are all tricky choices. And that's because they can be super expensive and very varied with their prices and levels and gear. So be very careful on how much you're willing to pay for them and for the stats you're getting. This price range, they they actually do come down to this level, 2,000 to 2,500, 19 to 23, 17 to 21. 
they can get within these price ranges and if you can find a cheap version of these guys do pick them up because this is sort of where they start becoming more cost effective uh, anything when they come to like 3,000 or more that's just insane don't spend your money like that uh, what's different though is the southern assassin or the assassin however you like to say it is a bit more consistent with its price it's one of the rare backgrounds that stays very consistent um, at an expensive price, between about two and two, three hundred. Uh, I definitely recommend them if you're wanting to be consistent with prices and not have to spend too much or hunt very far, and they're very good as fencers and dodge builds. Now, moving along, we're doing the hybrid choices here, and the Arbalist, as usual, is amazing, but super rare, but the Beast Slayer is your probably your best hybrid option in the entire game uh, but they are a bit tricky to get down to this beautiful 1300 to 1800 price range so try and search around because they can be a little expensive but they do get down to this price so it is nice to find them and very cost effective when getting down to this range uh, our ranged options arbalist again you can see a trend the arbalist is in every category they're so amazing but super rare but the big highlight here is the Hunter. Usually pretty reliable in price. Not always, but usually. 1100 and 1600 is what I'm willing to pay for them, especially with the stars. And I usually save up my money for Hunters all the time. Just such a good background, top of the range stats, and definitely reliable. But I'm not usually willing to spend more than that 1600 because then it's becoming a bit too expensive. But, you know, if you get super good stars, maybe a little bit higher than 1600. Now, finally, our tank options are actually pretty decent here. Uh, if you ignore the super rarity uh, Arbalist, Soldier, and uh, Warrior, they are all very good options, but get lucky on finding them. Uh, the main highlight here is the Shield Maiden, the best, absolute best melee defense in the entire game. Never going to find anyone to beat it, not even in the next bracket. Um, but yeah, definitely save up your money for Hunters and Shield Maidens, beasts in their own category. But interestingly enough, if you can't find them, go for the Retired Soldiers and the Adventurous Nobles. They actually can provide some nice defense, especially for the price that they offer. As long as you have stars, they can actually provide you what you need in that role of a tank. But that should be it for this bracket. We're going to move on to our last bracket for today, the costly ones. Um, aptly named as you'll need to be rather rich to afford a recruit and their daily wages. That's the big hitter. However, they are very reliable in their stats and can provide a lot of strength for your team if you have the coin. Uh, I don't think these guys are cost effective though. In terms of a cost effective guide, this is the bracket that we're sort of throwing that out the window. Uh, I still had to add them here for you guys that are rich and have money coming out of your ears. So these are your main options. And there's not many, though. There's a lot of expensive backgrounds in the game, but these ones are the only ones that are actually reliable for the stats and the price that you get them at. I didn't put Hedge Knights because they're just too expensive for what they give. They're not worth it. But our options here in Melee are the Gladiator, the Sellsword, and the Swordmaster. They're the only ones worth mentioning, as the other ones are so expensive. Uh, but you can get these guys down to the prices here listed. You can get Soul Swords for about 2.5 to 3.7 thousand. They can be pretty good for these prices. Uh, Swordmasters have a bit of weaker health, but 4,300 to 47 is very decent for a very strong attack. Gladiators are all around just amazing. Uh, I'd say if you have tons of money, go for gladiators. They're super great and not super hard to find, too. Uh, so, yeah, those are your really good options there. There are no real hybrid options or banner options and stuff for people who have tons of money. So just search those other brackets. But for range, the Master Archer is aptly the best range stat in the game. But you're going to have to pay through the nose because they're the most expensive background in the game. Uh, I recommend getting hunters all the time. You can get 10 hunters for the price of one master archer, and you're only sacrificing a few range stats, not even, not even 10. So you can still spend your money like this. They are super strong, 
but you know, not cost effective in the slightest. Now finally, we don't really have tank options for the costly ones, but Swordmasters and Cell Swords can get some really nice defense stats on occasion, and I'd say they are pretty reliable for what they have, as long as you have the stars. And, but they are getting a bit expensive, so you saw the Shield Maidens were like 1,000 to 2,500 even. Um, and you're getting other defensive tanks for a lot cheaper. But if you have the coin, they are valuable and useful. And you'll be happy with any of these brothers on your team, um, as long as you can pay for them. But that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, but before we go, I'll do a quick summary and some final notes. Just to remember that it's all my personal opinion, but I do urge you to try these backgrounds out for yourself so you can find your own favorites. Uh, as a quick summary of each bracket is the 0 to 600 is where you'll find the cheapest and most cost-effective backgrounds, but you will not get a banger every time, so you might need a little luck. The 600 to 1100 is where you'll find a couple well-priced backgrounds with good stats. Emphasis on the Militia and the Manhunter there, they're very good for your melee. The 1100 to 2500 is where you'll find reliable backgrounds, but you're going to have to pay a decent chunk of your wallet for them, but always save up for Hunters and Shield Maidens when you can. The final 2500 is only for your rich people, as they are definitely not cost effective. All in all, I hope this guide has helped you when you're considering a new recruit and the cost you're willing to pay for them. And don't forget to check out my other guide videos and personal spreadsheet where you can find all of our Legends mod stats and info, where I will also be putting copies of this guide as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. See yous.